So really quickly before I get into the configuration specs, I just wanted to talk about the Dave 2 D video that I saw last week. And specifically, you know, he mentions that when he gave it to other people, it felt like plasticky and it didn't feel very premium. In the Verge video, however, they stated the opposite. Now, Dave 2 D did have a DVT2 engineering sample. So my guess is that, you know, it wasn't the perfect fit and finish. Framework even put out a tweet uh, mentioning that. So I'm pretty optimistic that it will have a very premium and non like plasticky feel to it. A lot of the times with these engineering samples, they're using earlier versions. And so you can expect certain things aren't going to be up to snuff. Dave did put that in his description that it was a DVT2. So potentially we could see it come out with a better fit and finish. Just looking at the design process, I feel like it's going to be pretty solid feeling and like pretty good quality and based off of the framework 13s that do feel kind of premium. So I would love to know your thoughts in the comments. Now let's get into the configuration specs I chose. So getting a little bit into my pre-order here, you can see that mine will be coming in early Q1 and the shipping is free, which is nice for such an expensive laptop. But anyways, I went with the Ryzen 7 7840HS CPU, specifically because the whole kind of ideology with framework is that in a few years, I could upgrade my CPU and get like a Ryzen 9 88 or 98 something, right? And the performance uplift will be very significant then. It'll probably be like 40, 50% uplift. Whereas going from like a Ryzen 7 to a Ryzen 9, you're getting a very small uh, uplift in the boost clock. And you're probably getting 4 to 5% difference. I haven't tested these, but you know, I'm just saying roughly you're probably getting that based on what I've seen from other uh, processors. So that's just something that, you know, why go the really high end if I'm just going to swap that in a few years and get something that even the base configuration of years will be much more powerful. For the expansion bay module, I did get the uh, RX 7700S, the only GPU they offer now. And because I got that, I do need the 180 watt power adapter. So you can see that brings the base configuration right up to 1750. And then I did go with 64 gigs of RAM, which isn't overkill. I think it's a pretty solid amount, you know, two by 32. And uh, potentially I could overclock this. So 5,600 is good. Um, I could have bought this, you know, elsewhere, but I just kind of wanted to get everything from framework. This is another thing where I didn't go like 128. I didn't go overkill because in a few years down the line, I could potentially, you know, get 128 gigs. If it's DDR5, it'll be faster RAM theoretically. And potentially in a few years, it could even be DDR6. So then you're talking like insane speed boosts, right? Like you're going to get 9,000, 10,000 megahertz. So that's another thing that I think going kind of middle of the road is, is smart and uh, just more cost effective and just makes more sense. Similarly with the SSD. It's, uh, I got the two terabyte one. Potentially you could you know, add another two terabyte down the line. Two terabyte's a nice sweet spot or like swap this two terabyte for an eight terabyte down the line when prices come down, which they inevitably do for SSDs and flash storage. So yeah, not too bad, 200 bucks there. Then I went the US English keyboard layout. I went with the black bezel they offer. They really don't have many options here. Uh, kind of disappointing to see from the start, but uh, this is something that potentially third-party companies could come out with really cool things. Framework does make some cool uh, bezels as well that they might release down the line. So I could potentially get one of those when they come out, but I went kind of simple with the black one here. Then it comes with a uh, poster and an illustration, which is a little freebie. And the other freebie is the Starfield game. I haven't tried that yet, but uh, I will definitely be playing that um, either soon or when I get my framework, I'll, I'll test that out on it. Then I got the expansion base shell. Now, I specifically got the expansion base shell because there are instances where the graphics module is big and it might not fit in the bag that I want to travel with, like I've seen with the, the Legion 5 Pro or the Legion 7s uh, that have the extra back part. 
So I got it for that. And also I do want to test the iGPU, the 780M with uh, you know, fast RAM and potentially overclocking the RAM and see how that performs. I haven't used one of those yet. So curious about that. And then because I'm new to the framework ecosystem, I went with six expansion cards, uh, a USB-A kind of legacy port if I want to put a Logitech mouse dongle or if I just need a legacy port for old stuff. Then I went with two USB-Cs, uh, one for power, one for whatever else I want to use it for, um, maybe a dock of some sort or it just, you know, the opportunities are endless there. So micro SD um, for transferring stuff in and out of the, the laptop. I'm kind of curious if they make an SD card as well, but I personally prefer micro SD. Then I went with a third gen HDMI expansion card here. This is kind of important to me. I use a lot of external displays and I like to have the ability to plug it into like a TV if I need. And then the audio expansion card, I use a lot of uh, wired headphones. So this is kind of a nice thing to have and uh, will definitely be a permanent port for me there. And then now to some of the more experimental stuff or uh, accessories that are a little less necessary, but I kind of wanted to try. The color shift module, in my previous framework video, I talked about how if I had a music production set up for this laptop, this would be cool for like audio metering levels. It just would be cool to play around with. It'll, it'll be interesting to see what software does with this stuff. So I want that to just kind of test it out and see. Similarly with the RGB macro pad module here, uh, it's a little pricier, it's like 80 bucks, but uh, if it can provide any sort of functionality like a Stream Deck does, for example, that I use at my desk, that would be uh, pretty cool to try out and just kind of test. Then the NumPad module, when I'm crunching numbers, uh, either in Excel or I'm video editing uh, using kind of the digits there, that's really important for me. Just worth the 39 bucks for sure. Uh, there's certainly things you could skimp out on here, like you know the RGB macro pad. Uh, maybe you don't really need super graphics. You could just go with the regular one, with the regular uh, expansion port. And yeah, you can certainly save money if you buy your own RAM or reuse RAM from another laptop or uh, get your own SSD, for example. This is, I would say, not a very conservative build here, um, but it is coming out to about 2866. It was a $100 deposit, so that's kind of the ideology of why I chose what I did. Hopefully that was a little helpful for you um, if you're going to build your own or if you're kind of debating of what specs you want to do. So anyways, yeah, stay tuned for more framework videos. I'll put my last video up here and uh, hopefully I will see you again soon. Cheers.